What is up, heroes? This is Minite Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we made our way to the treatment center, and now we have to escape from it. However, I don't think we got started with it at all. I think we just showed up in here, and who are we even with? I think we're with... Oops. Um, who are we accompanied by at the moment? <clears throat> Jeez, I don't even remember who we're hanging out with. And it's not like I can see them in the room, can I? Alright, well, well, we'll figure it out slowly as time goes on. I think we're with Clover and... Quark? Maybe? I think so. Anyways, it was saying that there are three treatment pods. They're numbered 1, 2, and 3 from left to right. Anything else to pick up in there? Probably not for the time being. Let's see what the screen has to say, though. There's a button under the screen. Push it, then. Right. And there. Oh, I'm surprised we don't have to turn on the power first. Hey, it turned on. Looks like there's something on it. Okay, what's on it? Oh my. What the heck is this? It says start in the corner there. Maybe it's a board game? Hmm. You found an image of a board game. You can review it in the archive. Okay. Interesting. Nice lion. That's a pretty realistic painting. It's a really, really, really real lion. Don't sing in a whisper like that. It's creepy. I don't get the reference. Somebody please enlighten me. It looks kind of like he's coughing up a hairball. I think he's trying to eat something, not cough it up. And of course, it's missing, you know, whatever it is, so we have to replace it. And of course, it's going to be the sun. He's trying to eat a hairball? Uh, probably something else. What? I don't know. There's just a hole there. So we need to put something into the hole? Yeah, I think so. Luckily, Sigma is pretty experienced with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Aliens! Pretty sure they're just jellyfish. Aliens. There are three jellyfish. Two yellow ones and a purple one. What's that inside the purple one? Is it digesting human flesh? Why would you even think something like that? I don't think it's meat anyway. Look at it. It's too solid. I think it's a tile of some sort. Huh. Yeah, that is kind of odd. Hmm. I wonder if we can get it out. Yeah, I mean, there's this lid on the top. The lid? The lid? There's a lid on the tanks. You can't open it? Nope. Looks like it's locked. Well, it's got a keyhole. Then I guess we need to unlock it if we want to open it. Yeah, sounds about right. We'll keep on exploring. There's the door. Anything with this plant? A plant. It's all withered up. How sad. I bet it hasn't been watered. Yeah. Did you notice there's something stuck in the trunk? Yeah, it looks like red plastic. Let me have a look. I'll see if I can pull it out. Huh? It won't budge. I think it's stuck on something. Guess we have to take the whole thing then. Huh? Well, that red thing is probably important. Yeah. You're probably right. That's hilarious. So we have the withered plant, which has something red sticking out of its trunk. We can presumably cut away at that, or I was thinking we'd have to water it, and that would like loosen it up or something, but... Oh well, for the time being, we have that in our inventory. What else do we want to do? There's a clock over here. A wall clock. Nothing strange here. What? Are you serious? Are we even looking at the same clock? Everything about it is abnormal. Really? It totally looks like a regular clock to me. Oh my gosh. Okay, abnormality number one. No hands! Oh yeah, I guess it doesn't have any. What do you mean you guess? How could you miss that? S sorry. Anyway. Abnormality number two. There's some weird green glowy thing. Oh yeah, there is. What is that? I guess there's no way to know without taking it out. But there's a cover, right? You can't get to it. Yeah, and it won't open. Shoot. Well, duh. There's no way it's going to be that easy. So if we want this green thing, we have to figure out a way to get that cover open. 
That green thing, is it maybe like an SD card or something? Yep. Abnormality number three is the hole on the bottom left corner. Huh. I wonder what it is. I think it's probably a keyhole. Oh ho! Then that means... Wait! We can think later. I've got two more points of abnormality. <laughs> number four! Turn your attention to the other side of the clock. Specifically the bottom right corner. What do you think these are? Well, they're two slots painted red and green. Do you think they're for memory cards? They sure look like they are. And I've saved the best for last. Abnormality number five is about number four, huh? And look, see where it says NO.4? Is there really a dot? That NO.4 is the fifth abnormality. Ah, yes, I see, it is rather odd. Does that mean this is the fourth clock? Anyway, those are the five weird things about this clock. Where were you looking, anyway? Uh, at the clock? Then your eyes must be worse than I thought. Wow, a lot of shade. So, I mean, I don't really think there's a lot we can do with this at the moment, but it is good to acknowledge that it is weird. There's this stuff down here. A binder. Okay, so this is just gonna be a bunch of info. Looks like there's a piece of paper in it. It says how to open the pod room door. Okay, and then what about this over here? A tablet. Okay, naturally we'll insert things there, and it'll change colors of the screen. And then here, of course, is the pod room door. Shoot! Won't open. There's a control panel in the middle of it. Yeah. I think this is how you unlock it. This door can only be unlocked with the correct four-digit code. You can use the hit and blow numbers to determine the correct number. What? For each of the numbers that is A the correct number or B in the correct place, you'll get one hit. For each of the numbers that is the correct number, but not in the correct place, you will get one blow. You have 10 guesses to figure out the password. If you guess wrong 10 times, the code will reset and you must start over. I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to work, but I guess I can mess with it a bit. Interesting. So, I guess what we can do... Hmm, what's a good way to go th about this? We have 10, right? What's, a, what's an efficient way of going about this? I guess, before I get carried away, let's see here. The door is protected by a four-digit password. Oh, no, so this is just, um, we already have this. So let's see here. What I was thinking is we could remove them and narrow them down, but that's not going to, that's going to be kind of difficult, right? So, for example, if I do one, two, three, four, and click check, we have two blows, meaning two of these numbers are correct, but not in the right spot. So then what I could do is do something like One, three, two, I don't know. Uh, well, one, three, two, uh, is that what I want to do? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, one, two, three, four. So two of those numbers are correct, but in the wrong place. What I could do is try to remove two of the numbers and see how it goes. So something like one, two, one, two. Oh, I can't repeat. Interesting, so that makes things a lot clearer. So if I do one, two, three, four, it means of the remaining five, six, seven, eight, nine, there are also only two more blows to be had, right? So if I were to do one, two, three, five, for example, and I get two blows, it means either the two blows were one and two, or actually that was, that was a really bad example now that I think about it. Because <laughs> it either means the two were amongst the one, two, and three, or it was just four and five are both, are also blows. So let's try one, two, three, six. And we get one blow. Interesting. Very interesting. So that confirms that there's only one blow amongst the one, two, and three, and both four and five are numbers that we need. Right? So now we can say, all right, <clears throat> Let's start experimenting with four and five in other places and try to rule out one, two, and three. 
So if we do something like four, five, one, two, let's see if we get three blows or not. Wait, we got three hits? Wow. So first of all, this confirms that one in, of amongst one and two, one of them is the correct number and one of them is not, which means three is the correct number. So it's really four, five, three, and then one or two. So let's try four, five, one, three. So that's three hits. So it's gotta be four, five, one, two. Okay. Um, <laughs> I feel like I, well, I'm, oh wait, no, I, I was, I had said earlier, I deduced that there were, amongst the one, two, and three, only one of them was the correct number. So I don't know why I mistakenly thought two of those three were correct. And thus the last two rounds were just a complete waste of, of time. However, we got pretty lucky with regards to the placement of four, five, and one. So we might still be able to bring this back. We said it was not six. So it's four, five, one, seven, or, well, I mean, yeah, we can actually figure this out, right? So four, five, one, seven, that's it. Wow, so definitely got a little bit lucky there. You did it, Sigma. Looks like that was the answer. Whew, that was lucky. Anyway, it seems to have unlocked. I was gonna say, while we were testing that fourth digit that we were looking for, we could have just tried a few different permutations of the three that we did know were the correct numbers, but not necessarily in the right place. So I don't think it was that necessary that we ended up that lucky, but um, because we had you know four or five different guesses from that point forward that we could have tried different locations for each of those three. And um, I think given that order matters, there are only three different ways that those can be arranged. So yeah, three choose two. Anyways, looks like there are three pods. From the left, they're pod one, pod two, and pod three. There are numbers on them. You just can't really see them from here. Okay. And it looks like this one has a clock on it. Also, they've got, um, handles. Maybe they're for opening the pods up. So we've got a key in here, which is always helpful. There's something in here, a key. A white key. Is it gonna close? The cover for pod one seems pretty normal to me. Okay, but now we can't close it, can we? Oh no, we can now, okay. And so what's the time shown? It looks to be four o'clock. That's good to know for the future. Actually, can I interact with the screen here? I can. There's a message on the screen. Maintenance complete. Please insert an activation chip. What does it mean about an activation chip? Well, I guess it's a chip we insert to activate the pod. You think? Why are you being like that? This is important. We... Okay, okay, I get it. We need to get Quark into one of these, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at the second one. We open this one, and we have a second key, and on the inside is another clock. Yeah. It is a key, isn't it? Okay, it's a silver key. Looks a little bit different compared to the, yeah, the white one. And then on the inside is a different time, right? Oh, interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and take a look at that other one because I always assume just a particular orientation. Um, but this one's actually rotated. So this would be like, what, 620? Yeah. So we have four o'clock and we have 620 so far. Yeah, so that would have screwed me over because I had the orientation of the clock right. I didn't even pay attention to the 12 there. So this is 715. So I should write these down. So we've got 715 in pod one. In pod two, we have 620. And in pod three, we're gonna have something else, almost certainly. No key though. What's up here? 
So this is probably 111, but presumably, I don't know, we'll, we'll write it down. Well, we'll say 111, but it could also just be upside down and, well, no, it couldn't be 11-1, right? I don't think so, at least. No key or anything? No, it's kind of a bummer. Maybe we should take a look at the screens for the second and third treatment pods, too. There's a message. Currently undergoing internal maintenance. Please stand by. I guess we can't use this one. Yeah. Alright, well, that's good to know, I guess. And then what about over here? Alright, same thing. Okay, so I guess uh, we can try the keys here. This must be where the activation chip goes. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so clearly this is not what we're supposed to be. Um... Yeah, so it's not fit for a key. That's okay, though. We have a couple keys now, right? How do I escape from this room? How do I get out of the, the treatment pod? There we go. So there have been a couple places where we found keys, right? Let's look at the clock. See if we can use the key in the corner. A handless clock underneath the glass cover. The bottom left corner has something that looks like a keyhole. Huh? That's strange. What is it? The key doesn't fit. Hmm, I think maybe this key goes somewhere else then? Like where? Okay, then we'll try the white key. There we go. Haha! -ha. It's open. Okay, and now that it's open, hmm, well, I guess I'll grab this thing first. Chip with N01, so number one written on it, okay? I, well, it's green, so I, I am curious to try this, but I also think it might be for pod number one. These look like card slots. There's a red one and a green one. Okay, given that we can't do that, let's head on back into the pod room and see if this is the activation chip for pod number one. Looks like it. Oh, look, the color changed. I think it says something, too. There's a message on the screen. Before use, this system must be initialized. Please perform the following tests. 1. Treat vegetation. 2. Freeze vegetation. Until tests are complete, pod will not function with human occupant. <laughs> what the heck is this? We can't put a person in there until it runs its test. Seems like pretty clear to me. Then what about Quark? Don't worry. We just need to run the tests. Something about treating and freezing a plant? Yeah, treating makes sense. These being treatment pods and, pods and all, but... Freezing? Well, I mean, we've already seen the other timeline, the cryostasis, right? Well, we don't really have a choice, do we? We gotta follow the instructions. Come on, we don't have time to just sit around. We gotta do these tests so we can get Quark into one of these pods. Yeah, yeah, right, got it. Okay. Luckily, we have a plant, right? Did you see this drawing next to the handle? Yeah, I did. Okay. And now, we can very happily place our withered plant inside the treatment pod. Okay, I put the withered plant down. What do we do next? Let's try closing the pod. Right, here it goes. It's going to be rejuvenated back to its healthy self. Identifying subject, done. Diagnosing subject, done. Initiating treatment cycle, done. <laughs> and hopefully, once it's healthy again, we can get that red card from it. We can put that in the clock and see what having both... Well, actually, I don't know, but it, it probably belongs in the clock. Treatment completed. Pod opening. Hey, what the heck is this? That plant was practically dead a minute ago. No way. No way. That's impossible. It's like magic. Well, we won't need this plant anymore. He's done a good job. Thank you for your service, sir. Huh? Hey, it looks like there's something here. It must be the thing that was stuck in the trunk. Whatever the treatment was, must, must have uh, pushed it out. Alright, so there's the red memory card. So yeah, we can almost certainly put that in the, in the clock. Although I am curious to see if I can combine this with the tablet before doing so. Okay. Because we haven't found a use for the tablet yet. Okay, back to the clock. 
Look, there's a hand on the face now. <clears throat> Is this an hour hand? It's pointing to four o'clock. Okay. I mean, we probably need to create specific times, right? With all of the different, uh, with both chips, which means we need to find that number, not number, that green chip first. Is it in here? It totally is. Oh, do you think we could use this plan for one of those tests? Yeah, I guess we could. There's something green sticking out of the truck. <laughs> of course. So this one's healthy, though. So this is probably the one for the freezing test, not the uh, vegetation test. So let's go in and do that. We'll get our green one. And then we can create each of the three different times on the clock that we found written on each of the treatment pods. Seems straightforward enough. My real question is going to be, where do we get involved with the tablet that we're holding, right? And then there was that board game we saw earlier. Okay, this time it's the healthy plants turn. I wonder if it'll work. Who knows? Well, let's just close it up. Identifying subject, done. Diagnosing subject, done. Initiating freeze cycle. And the end result? Freeze test complete. Pod opening. Well, it definitely looks frozen. Whoa! It's totally frozen stiff. Probably because of your lame joke. <laughs> Did I say something? Look, the leaves are all crunchy. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Ah! Oh man, what'd you do, Clover? It's all broken now. B but, whatever. Just help me clean it up. Huh? This wasn't here before. It's that plastic thing that was stuck in the trunk. It must have fallen out when the, the plant shattered. Cool, so now we have the green memory card. All right, I think I should complete both the tests, so hurry up and put Quark in. I know, I know. Hang on. Oh, I just want to get to the clock. Who cares about Quark? No. <laughs> there we go. He's sure sleeping pretty hard, huh? You never think he's sick. I guess that Soparil stuff is pretty strong. Yeah. So, what do we do now? How about closing the cover like we did before? That should start the automatic diagnosis. Got it. So we don't even need two doses of Accelerator if we can effectively use the treatment center and one dose of Accelerator. We can treat two people, right? Identifying subject, done. Diagnosing subject, done. Single human occupant secured. Beginning treatment. Is he going to be okay? Maybe we should check the screen. Yeah. Is this where we play the board game? I think this is some kind of readout of Quark's vital signs. Body temperature, pulse rate, blood pressure, respiration, frequency. They all look normal. What a relief. Wait. There's something else down at the bottom. Radical 6 virus detected in subject. System is not equipped to treat Radical 6. Current program will alleviate symptoms but cannot cure viral infection. Good to know. What the heck? Then what was the point of putting him in here? Well, I don't think there was no point. Yeah, right? I mean, like, it, while he's in the treatment pod, it is alleviating symptoms, which is going to leave him more stable. And importantly, he can't kill himself in there. So even if Radical 6 is something that is incredibly stressful to endure, um, if most of its lethality comes from user, or, you know, those affected uh, killing themselves, preventing him from killing himself is going to be what ultimately... Uh, saves him, right? If he's able to survive the duration of the virus. Also, if he's stuck, frozen or not, inside one of these treatment pods, he's not going to experience the significant anxiety and stress that comes with, well, the slowed down experience of the world, right? Where every, where you're interacting with other people and they seem sped up, and that's what drives you to feel that way, right? After all, it says it can alleviate the symptoms. But, hold on, let's keep looking. It says more. This system is capable of inducing a cold sleep state. Cold sleep state freezes subjects with CAS, preserving cellular structure. During cold sleep state, body functions are suspended, preventing viral spread. Activate sleep function? Yes or no. Cold sleep? What the heck is that? I have no idea. But remember the freezing test? Hmm. 
whatever. We need to get out of here and tell everyone else about this. What should we tell it to do? Huh? Do we put him in cold sleep? Activate sleep function? Yes or no? No question. What if he got smashed like the plant? No it is. Interesting that they don't even make us choose. Okay. All right, well, now that we've done that and we have the green chip, we can go back to the clock. It did it again. There's another hand. A minute hand this time. Looks like it's pointing to five past. Can I change it, please? Four o'clock. Five minutes past. Okay. There's a card in each slot. Um, can I use the tablet on them to change the time? Is that what I need to do? I don't know how to... I don't know how to change the, the slot. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know what to do with that just yet. But we do have this other key that we haven't been able to use it yet. So let's see what we can do with this tank. There we go. Now I should be able to open this thing. Alright. What the heck? There's a second lid. Yeah, but it's got a hole in the middle. If you stick your hand in there, maybe you can grab the one with the meat in it. It's not meat. Whatever. Let's give it a shot. Ah! Hot! Crap, this water's really hot. Really? Really. Then these bubbles, yeah, it's boiling. No way, no jellyfish could survive in boiling water. They are aliens. Yeah, we should try and get the purple one to rise up to the top somehow. If we can get it right under the hole in the lid. I think I can grab it. You can move the three jellyfish by clicking and dragging the mouse or using the arrow keys. Move the purple jellyfish to the hole using the water currents in the tank. If you move one of the yellow fish to the hole instead, you are a failure and we are very disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> what sass coming from the game? All right, let's do this. Oh, so this is pretty interesting. Can I not move? Oh, I see. I see. I see. All right, so we can go to the right one, and then if we wanted to, we we'll probably bring this guy down, and then we can just go to the left, and we should be fine. Thank you. I, I I'm, was really worried that the game would be disappointed in me, but alas, we, we made it. Gotta grab a jelly fest. What the heck? Jellyfish and fast, because the water is hot. That was uh that was not so great, Sigma. Artificial jellyfish. What does it have inside? This is Ellen. She's a mysterious intelligent life form from the outer reaches of space. Don't give it a name. Here. Here, take it. Hey, stop it! What if it grabs onto my face and lays eggs in me or something? Ha! Come on, it just wants to give you a hug. Besides, it's not even alive. It's a thing, man-made, like a toy or something. But it's digesting a chunk of meat. That's not meat! Then what is it? Hold on, I'll pull it out, pull it out now. Circular tile. So we probably need to place this on the clock in order to actually rotate things, right? It's human flesh! No, it's not. It's a ceramic tile. Oh, well, I, I guess it is only red on one side. Alright. So now that we've done that, let's see if we can do this. I guess not. And we've already done that. Hmm. So if the hands on the clock are going to 4.05... I mean, maybe we need four individual times, right? And so this was just another way of getting a time. It's not something I actually needed to change the time on. So we could say number four is uh, 4.05. Okay, so now the question is, what do we do with this ceramic tile? Ah, of course. We put it there. Yep. Fits perfectly. Yeah, I don't think it did anything though. Look, huh? What's changing now? Ooh, what the heck is this? A uh, laser? What's the laser doing? Gosh, I didn't think there'd be something like this behind that picture. A laser. Okay. 
can we do anything with the laser? I mean, I highly doubt we have to use the tablet with the laser, right? The question is, what is it shining the laser on? I can see three treatment pods from the left of number one, two, and three. Does it mean that three is like the most important time? Like that's the one we actually need to use or something? I don't know. Uh, maybe we need to raise the treatment pod. And then it'll interact with the laser somehow. I'm not sure to be honest. Oh, interesting. So the laser projects onto it. So that's a pretty big deal, right? So let's do this. That 111, potentially, is now 0, 0, 15, which is a big difference. Okay, and with that, just need to figure out what to do with this tablet, man. I can't think of much else. There was just that board game thing we got. That's it. A tablet. There's a message on it. Four pieces for the first password. One piece for the second password. What the heck is that supposed to mean? If I touch it, the screen changes. Oh, so we don't even need to find something to insert into it. We don't need to find a battery pack for it or anything like that. So the password is how many digits? It is 12 digits long. I'm fairly confident it's gonna be the times, right? So let's see here. 715. 620. Huh? So it's only four digits then, I guess. Oops, I wanted to clear, but that's okay. Uh, maybe it's the 0015 that was highlighted. Nope. Hmm. Do you think maybe pieces could mean like the pieces in the board game? Pieces. Don't you remember what it said on the tablet before the password screen popped up? Like four pieces for the first password, one piece for the second password. Those pieces. Uh, okay, but what board game are you talking about? You already forgot? Gotcha. So if we go to the, what's it called? Archive. Let's take a look at the, is this the board game? It is. So we have four pieces and okay, so these are gonna spell things out. Hmm. So. I'm not really sure how to decipher this. I can clearly see the four pieces on the left hand side by the start point. There's an M and an H in the middle indicating some reason for going around clockwise or counterclockwise. But it's not like I know where to start and, and how to play, right? It's labeled as a dice game, but we don't have dice to play with, do we? But this is how we get the password for the tablet. But how do we play it? I don't know. I was just thinking, maybe this is some sort of password hint, huh? Come on, for the tablet! That's some kind of a login screen, right? Yeah, so? Well, you need a four letter password and we've got the numbers one through four on the left side of this board game looking thing. Don't you feel like there's gotta be a connection? I mean, I do, but I don't really know what we do with it. We haven't done anything with this clock really yet. It has the number four on it. We never found like a number two or number three, did we? Um, I mean, at this point, I feel like I'm just gonna end up staring at the, the board game. Right, we have these four different times.
but I don't know how to integrate the two. So piece number one goes to 715. What would that look like? I guess you could maybe consider where would you end up if piece number one went to 715? Like it was on the hour hand maybe? It would probably be a Y. And if two were 620, it would be just past here. It would probably still be A. Three would be 0015, so that would be the very center, right? So that would be C. And then four would be 405. Yeah, I'm not really, I'd be like F. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know guys. I just like, I don't know how to play the board game. Illustration of a dice game. But I need to play this in order to get the password. Two of them apparently. And I really, I mean, it's not even like I have a whole bunch of stuff in my inventory, it's just the tablet. And I don't think there's anything else really to interact with. There's the safe itself. Anything over here? No. Anything over here? I mean, we can try the bottom of the tank? No. Okay, the laser. I mean, clearly those clock numbers are relevant. I just don't know how yet. I'm curious about like this button, but I can't seem to click on it. Yeah, I don't know guys. Maybe I, uh, something with those screens over there. Hmm. One, two, three, and then four. It's got something to do with using the time to represent like going around the board a certain number of times or something like that. So like the piece number one goes to the location of 715, but I, I don't know exactly what that would be on the board, right? I don't know. I'm gonna think on this for a minute. So I think I might be onto something. If the M represents minutes and the H represents hours. And so if we look at something like for piece one, that's 715, right? So that's seven hours and well 15 minutes but i would consider that like at the three right on the clock face so maybe that means for piece one we go seven counterclockwise and three clockwise meaning ultimately four counterclockwise from the start which would put it at one two three four r or if you consider you start at T and then move four spaces from that, we'll say, or U. And if piece number two similarly starts um, and then has to go 620, that's gonna be six in the hours, right? So six counterclockwise and then four clockwise. So ultimately two counterclockwise, which would either be H or sorry, 
just to be consistent, um, it would either be L or H. And then for 0015, that's just three in terms of the, the minutes, right? So that would be three clockwise, which would be B, or if you're starting at T, that would be C. All right, and then four was 405, right? So if it was four hours, that would be four counterclockwise, and then five would be one clockwise. That would be three clockwise, which would similarly be B or C. Which I don't really like, because I feel like they're supposed to make sense. So then the alternative is we treat the number of minutes as truly the number of minutes and not just the number of the clock face representing the set of minutes, right? So in piece one's case, 715 would be seven units counterclockwise and 15 minutes clockwise. So ultimately eight units clockwise. What would that be? That would be P. Actually, I should just do this in a different color. That would be P. Or if you consider you start on the T tile and then move eight, that would be um, S. And for piece number two, 620 would be 14 units clockwise, right? So again, if you start on the start tile, but not on T, that would be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, A. Or if you consider starting on T, that would be S. Now for piece number three, we're at just 15 minutes, right? So 15 units clockwise, which is gonna be just one beyond what we had before. So S or, and then in this case, Y. And it's looking like it's the former. <laughs> like we start on the start tile, not on the T which is might be a bit misleading about the design, but 405, that's just going to be one unit uh, clockwise, which is either going to be T or O. And so clearly this spells out past, which is something meaningful. <laughs> so let's try that. A tablet. The screen says the following. Four pieces for the first password, one piece for the second password. If I touch it, the screen changes. So the first password is past. Lovely. Good job. You logged in. Yeah, but look at the screen. Okay, so that's the escape password. Huh? This is... It's a password for the safe. Okay. And now... A tablet. The screen says the following. Four pieces for the first password, one piece for the second password. If I touch it, the screen changes. So now we have the second password. And our clue is only one piece for the second password. One piece. What could that mean? Right? Is it one digit? Meaning just one of the letters? I doubt it. I'll try that, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Yeah, so each piece individually is not going to be correct. So what could be the one piece password? Hmm. This is even more perplexing. Cause I don't think it's one piece. I think that means if we were to take one piece and then follow all of these instructions, what would we get? Right? So, for example, if we start off with piece number one and the very first time, we end up at P, right? 
So we end up at P. And then if we go for the second time, that's also going to be 14 units clockwise from that P, right? So if we do that, what does that leave us at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 0. Oh, okay. And then if we go 15 units clockwise, where does that take us? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, U. Okay. And then from U, if we go one unit clockwise, that is going to take us to R. So pour. Huh. Let's try it. Wow, that worked. Very interesting. Huh, thought so. Nice work, Sigma. Yeah, I guess. Oh, wait, look. Okay, and with that we have our hidden file password. Huh? This one is different. All the symbols are in different spots. Okay, and with that, we are... we're good to go. I don't know why my, my game is kind of laggy at the moment, but... Sorry, right, we'll, we'll hang in there. This is a safe, right? Yeah, just like the ones in the AB room. It should open when we plug in the right password. Assuming it works like the others, of course. So I think it was what? Star, sun, star. You did it. You opened it. That we did. Okay. And one more time. Let me check, just to be safe. No pun intended. Sun, sun, and star. All right. Whew, it's open. Good job. That's twice you opened it. Whoa, that thing looks dangerous. You mean this gun thing? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's an injection gun. I think this is just an injection gun. The question is, is it preloaded with something? It's helpful tool, not a weapon. Are you sure? I think that kind of depends on what's in that vial there. Exactly. The label says Neostigmine, which, of course, we've seen Dio hold on to in a previous timeline. I don't remember anything else about what that timeline's context was, but if Dio had not been in the laboratory, or not the laboratory, the treatment room during that timeline, it would be concerning or more evidence that Dio in particular is able to enter various rooms that have not previously been opened due to, you know, um, like escape rooms or chromatic door opening, etc. right? The Dio has that access. And if he did have access to the treatment room, then it just goes to show, well, this is exactly where he got it in that timeline, right? And uh, we know where to find it in the future, and we know at which point he's able to obtain it, right? Huh? What did you just say? Neostigmine? Why? Does that mean something? Well, let me see it. Neostigmine. Neostigmine. I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. No good. I can't remember. Darn. I don't think it's bad, though. I mean, it can be bad if you get enough of it. <laughs> Do you have any proof? Nope. Of course not. Um, could you let me hang on to this? Are you sure it's not dangerous? What would you do if it was? Alright, I trust you. You don't seem like a bad person. <laughs> Sigma clearly hasn't played 999. Thanks. Then how about I let you take me on a date sometime? If we get out of here in one piece. Yeah. What? <laughs> Just like that? <laughs> Just like a cannon? They set up a date that way? Cool. Moving on. We've still got a bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, but it's all flat stuff. Uh, yes it is. First we've got a map. Floor B, yada yada yada. Up next, some gray cards. Key cards. They've got moons on them, too. These must be the moon keys the announcer was talking about. There are two of them. One for you and B. And the other one's for Quark. But he's... Not doing so hot. Well, there's not much point in giving it to him. I'll hang on to it for now. Okay. What's next? A piece of paper with something written on it. Here are some more indie game rules for you. Not voting is not an option. Okay, we've definitely seen this before. But everybody gets penalized. In other words, one person of every color group of three has to vote. In other words, all three of us can't not vote. One of us has to. So either you or me, you mean. Oh well, there's no reason not to pick ally in the next round anyway. Of course, first we've got to get out of this room. And that'll be easy. Just look at the last thing in this safe. The key to the exit. Let's go. 
Okay, yes, let's go indeed. Not that I'm excited to abandon Quark, but I am looking forward to getting out of here. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. Three, two, one. And we made it. Whew, congrats. Overall, uh, overall the treatment center was pretty neat. And of course, <laughs> the classic, somebody opens the gate before we're even back yet. Gotta love it. Shout out to Dio, right? <laughs> and the next gate has been opened. Overall, Treatment Center is a pretty cool room. That board game, I think, was a little bit obtuse, and I would have appreciated a little bit more of a, of a nudge to be like, oh, this is a board game where I guess like the M and H are not super apparent that they represent minutes and hands. It was only after like sitting on it for a good five, ten minutes of like minutes and hand or like thinking about clocks and times and how they can relate to going around the board. Um, that it was like, oh, M and H, like minutes and hours. And then once I had established that, do we start on the T tile or do we start just before the T tile, right? That was something else to consider. And then do we consider for each time that we're given the number on the face of the clock or just the sheer number of minutes and, and hours? But Either way, um, it, it was still a cool room. I like that we got to treat Quark in the process and kind of advance some some of our understandings of the story and events and other timelines just for, through the process of escaping from the room, right? So that was that was pretty neat. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Of course, in the next episode, we're going to see, uh, likely Dio, but just exactly who has opened the Abidex gate and how the next AB game is going to proceed. There's definitely a lot on the line, and hopefully we're able to save Quark this time around. Um, it definitely would be nice. Hopefully we're able to protect him, right? We know that people are aware of what can be done in the treatment pods, and that if somebody is stuck in the treatment pod, they can be killed, right? Uh, like, unfortunately, Dio, I guess, met with uh, in a different timeline, but... Until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.